this is your first time here, we say welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Eddie, and um, my wife and I are the lead pastors here. If you're joining us on a live stream today by Facebook or social media, whatever that is, we say welcome to you today. And uh, we're so excited that you chose to join us. And today, if you're here in the building, you received an orange welcome packet when you came in. I want to encourage you, if you would, to grab that orange welcome packet, look inside of there. There are some message notes, and I'm going to encourage you to follow along in those notes. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking a message. It's just uh, simply talking about authority. Did you know that, that most of us in the room today have some sort of authority issues in our life? And today, I, I want to talk about authority issues. Today, I want to talk about to us... Um, about authority and, and how sometimes we have issues and we don't even realize that. So I want to ask you today to, to think about some things and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really invoke some thinking into your life, some deep thinking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some things today that may, may prick your heart and your spirit about the Word of God and about what God is saying to you, but I want you to be open and listen to what His Word says. So I want to ask you this morning... What is the authority in your life? What is the authority in your life? Authority. I want you to think about it for a moment. What, what does authority mean? Those that have rule over us. Those that are placed in a leadership over us. The second question I want to ask you is this. Who has authority in your life? Who is the person that has authority over you? Not only what is the authority, but who is the authority? You see, God is, is looking for willing people. Willing people that, that can show himself strong in us through his authority. He's looking for willing families that can show himself strong through our families by his authority working in us. So I want to ask you, what is the authority in your life and who is the authority? Today we're going to dive in and talk about authority issues. So I'm going to invite you today, if you have a Bible, to turn with us to the book of Colossians. If you don't have a Bible, uh, hopefully you have an app on your phone. And if you don't have that, I would encourage you to uh, get an app. It's called YouVersion, Y-O-U, Version. And it's a great app that is free. It has the Bible on it. We're going to read from the book of Colossians. If you had a paper Bible, it would be all the way to the right-hand side in the New Testament. And the book of Colossians is written by the Apostle Paul as he was speaking to the church. And today we're going to bring some clarity to simply authority in our lives. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and verse 16, makes a statement. This is what it says. Christ is the invisible image of or excuse me, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Today I want to first of all begin in knowing that we totally understand who Christ is. Christ is the Son of God. Christ is God incarnate, God in human form, sent to earth, sent to this place to set up planet earth and the authority structure that God has for who we would be. So Christ is a visible image of an invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things that we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world everything everything was created through him and for him can you just say everything everything absolutely everything was created by him and for him today I want to talk to you about authority authority issues in our life but first of all we have to come to a complete understanding of who God is and the authority that God has in our lives the authority of of really who God is in 
dominion over all of the earth. God sent Jesus, his son, the son of God, God incarnate, to be the authority that set this world in place. The things that we see and the things that are unseen. To set in place the, the authority structure of planet earth, the authority structure of our lives. I begin to think about really what is some things that we need to learn today about authority. What is, what is it? that really helps us to understand authority to its fullest degree. So two things that we're going to learn today that I, I want you to make note of, and the first one is this. We must learn to submit to God's authority. Look at somebody and say, you need to submit. Tell them that right now. You need to submit. To submit, what does it mean to submit to God's authority? The submission of ourselves to submit to God's authority. First of all, we've got to completely understand who God is, what God done, what he created, and the structure that he set in place. The authority of God and who God is through Jesus Christ and how that that affects each of us in our own lives. Not only spiritually, but physically and relationally. There is authority structure in our life. So we've got to learn to submit to God's authority. There's some people who like, well, I submit to God's authority, and, but there's some things that we really don't want to submit to that we try to take in our own hands and really rule ourselves. But, but when we do that, we move outside of what God's authority structure is. When we move outside of what the order that God placed and the, the order that God set the world to be in, then we're going against authority, which means something comes in our life called rebellion. Where we go against the authority of God and who God created us to be in his authority structure. I would tell you today that the authority of God is what makes the seasons what they are. And you might agree with me today to say, thank you Jesus, spring is finally here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, flowers are blooming, trees are budding, birds are singing. I'm so glad that winter is over. I mean, four weeks ago today we had three inches of snow on Sunday afternoon and today it's supposed to be 85 degrees you see that is the authority of God you can't change that he set up the seasons as a matter of fact no much no matter how much you like winter or summer or spring or fall you have no control of that you can't just say well I don't like this God you need to change this I mean if you want to change it go ahead I encourage you to even pray about it like that's really gonna matter because you see it's God's authority you can't stop winter from coming you can't stop the Sun from shining I mean just think about this outside of your authority outside of what you have control of this morning somewhere around 6 a.m. all of a sudden darkness disappeared because of the authority of God because he he allows the Sun to rise and all day today if you wanted the sun to stop shining, if you wanted it to get dark, it does just say 1 p.m. today, guess what? You don't have control of that. You have no authority over that. God has a system of authority. He set that by his authority into place. And we have no control of it. We have no ability to change that. You are living under God's authority all the time. Whether you like it or not, I don't think God really cares if you like it, if it gets daylight or dark. I mean... What if, what if you had, thank, thank God that you don't have the authority of that. Praise God for that. Because what if you just wanted it to be dark 24 hours a day? What if you wanted to just the sun to shine 24 hours a day? You see, you don't have the authority of that. God set himself in a place of authority through Jesus Christ that there's a structure to our lives. I mean, think about this. Since I've been talking this morning... For nine minutes and 45 seconds, everybody in this room has breathed approximately somewhere between 40 and 60 times. You didn't think about it. You didn't say, I need to take a breath. You know what? It just happened. You know why it happens? Because that's the authority of God. It is His authority, His structure. He set the world in motion and in place. I mean, you can decide today, well, I don't like breathing oxygen. I think I'll just stop breathing oxygen. Go ahead. Just stop. 
Just hold your breath right now. And as soon as you pass out, somebody from the safety team will come get you and haul your butt out. We'll call 911 for you. You can't change God's authority. You can't say, well, I don't want to breathe oxygen anymore. It just happens. It is the authority of God. He set himself in place for not only our physical life, but also our spiritual being and our emotional being. There is authority in your life. Look at somebody and say, you need to submit. Boy, isn't that hard to hear? Because sometimes we don't like authority in our life. But you see, God set a structure of authority. And you can't change what his authority is. Because he has set it in place. God has also given authority. He's given authority to people. In certain circumstances and situations. He has given authority to you as a parent. You have authority. But get this, I, I love this quote, or to be on the screen, is this, authority without wisdom is like a heavy axe without an edge. Authority without wisdom is like a heavy axe without an edge. Do you know some people who, who abuse and misuse their authority? Don't point fingers right now, especially if you're married. Authority. But you see, authority without wisdom is like a heavy axe that comes down without an edge. There's a lot of people who invoke authority, but they don't have much wisdom. You see, I believe that you should not be given authority without wisdom. If you are giving authority to someone, if you're placing someone in a place of leadership or authority, they should have wisdom. Because you see, with wisdom gives them the ability to have the authority in the right perspective. Authority without wisdom is like a heavy axe. But did you know this, that there are some people that are given authority that don't have wisdom. And let me tell you how that happens. Here's how that happens. There are some people who have authority, but they don't have wisdom. And here's how and here's why. Get this. Remember what God's structure is. God has an authority structure, an authority plan, system set in place. But if you go outside of God's plan, out of God's authority, out of God's wisdom, sometimes you're given authority when you should not have authority. And sometimes people get authority and they don't have any wisdom. Let me put it in this context. A 13-year-old girl who is not married that gets pregnant and has a baby she has been given authority by the plan of God as a parent. But a 13-year-old girl does not have the wisdom to have the authority to be a parent. You see, when you move outside of the structure of God, when you move outside of the structure of what God's plan is, He has an authority structure set in place. But you see, if that, if that authority, don't worry, it happened in the first service. Don't, don't think that if you, don't, if you move outside of that authority structure, that all of a sudden you can just handle things on your own. Let me tell you something. God has an authority structure. And if you don't give your life to the authority structure God has, here's what will happen in your life. You will you'll become this very undisciplined person. I mean, none of us would agree that a 13-year-old should have a baby. And have the authority to be a parent. She don't have the wisdom. A young man who gets a, a young girl pregnant. He don't have the wisdom at 13 years old to be a parent. But you know what? He's been given the authority to be a parent. But it's because he moved outside of the structure of what God's authority is. We know what God's authority is. We know when a, a parent should be a parent. It's, a, it's in God's plan. It's in God's word. Okay, you should, you should be a parent when... When two people that are married get married. That's God's plan. There are people that move outside of that. And sometimes we end up with wisdom and, 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 and not enough wisdom to do the authority that we should be doing. Okay? But I want you to understand that it's so important to help us to understand that in the mix of everything that we're doing and saying that God has a plan of structure. And that structure, that structure sometimes gets messed up by us. It gets messed up by you and I because we step outside of what God's plan is. We step outside of what God's structure is. 
today I, I just wonder if we really totally understand what it means to submit to God's authority. Authority without wisdom is like a heavy axe. Get this, without authority, people are undisciplined, lawless, and without order. Now think about that for a minute. Fill in the blank, if you will. Without authority, people are undisciplined. Undisciplined. Without authority, people are not only undisciplined, but they're lawless and without order. What does that mean? To be undisciplined. I mean, think about it in your life. What, what is the discipline that we're talking about? Without authority, people are undisciplined. Kids are undisciplined without authority. Without authority, there, there is no discipline. Think about people who maybe today in your life, you're struggling today. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction. Undisciplined people that live undisciplined struggle with authority. And if you're undisciplined, maybe addiction has taken over your life. Did you know that without discipline, you'll commit adultery in your marriage? Undisciplined people without authority cause chaos. It goes against the plan and the will of God. It is not the will of God that once you are married, you are committed to that person. That is the plan of God. Not just when you don't like the marriage anymore. Not just when, when somebody else flirts with you. Not just when somebody else tells you, oh man, you're losing weight. I love the new hairdo you got. You see, that is going undisciplined. And undisciplined people arrive at a place where they go against the authority of God. And when you go against the authority of God, you're taking matters in your own hand. And guess what? The structure and order you should have in your life disappears and it affects us spiritually, it affects us physically, it affects us emotionally and relationally. You see, God has an order. And until we realize that we should come under the order and the plan of God, I mean, what does it mean to be lawless? To lawless, I mean, just do what you want when you want. To just live lawless, live undisciplined. Authority. See, we all have authority issues in some way, some facet. Somehow, we have those. What does it mean to be without order? God has an order. God's word has an order, a plan, and the order is set in place. You know there are 7 billion people in this world? And if all 7 billion people wanted to stop the sun from coming up tomorrow, every one of them could do everything that they possibly can. And guess what? 7 billion people cannot stop the sun from coming up. You know why? Because it's God's order. God has authority. But sometimes in our own lives, we go against the authority of God in things that he has given us a plan and a structure for. And in that structure, what happens, we take authority ourselves, not submitting. We've got to learn to submit to God's authority. When you submit to God's authority, God already has a structure. He has a plan. He has an order for your life. And there are so many people living without order, living undisciplined without God's plan. Let me help you to understand what, what that looks like. In 1 Peter, I'm going to read a scripture. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 through 17, it makes it very plain. Okay? So here's Peter, and listen to what he says. Make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities. Stop for a moment. Make the master proud. Respect the authorities. You know, the, the problem is sometimes we don't, we don't submit to authority because we've not been taught honor. There's something that's missing in our world to, today is that when we don't respect authorities, there's a lack of honor in our lives. I want to tell you that the Word of God is very plain and very spoken that there is an authority that we should follow. And most of us don't like authority in our lives but yet you keep breathing up oxygen. We'll say, I don't want somebody telling me what to do. But yet you love it when the sun comes up tomorrow morning. You see, God has a structure. And in that structure, there's authority. It goes on to say this. 
respect the authorities, whatever their level. They are God's emissaries for keeping order. It is God's will. Everybody say God's will. It is God's will that by doing good, you might cure the ignorance of the fools who think you're a danger to society. Exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules. Your freedom is not in breaking the rules of God's authority. Your freedom is in serving God wholeheartedly. We get that mixed up. Remember, the devil is out there. The enemy is out there. The Bible says that he is going about as a roaring lion. He is not a lion. The Bible says, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Who he can devour. And in our lives, what happens sometimes is we don't realize that our freedom is not in breaking God's authority. Our freedom is in serving him. Authority issues. God has a plan of authority. Now get what it, it says. It says, exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. Love your spiritual family. Revere God and respect the government. Authority issues. Can I tell you today that God has a spiritual authority for your life? God has a relational authority in your life. God has a physical authority in your life. And what happens sometimes is we are not living at the fullest capacity that God wants us to live because we have not submitted ourselves to His authority. God has a plan of authority. No, it's really quiet in here today. I wonder if maybe the authority issues we have are present in our life because we have maybe failed to submit to his authority. I want you to think about that. Authority issues. We're missing a culture of, of honor. Here's another one of God's authorities. Parents, you should be parenting your kids, not your kids parenting you. God didn't establish it that way. God established you to be the parent, the authority figure in their lives. Not when your kids were born for them to tell you what to do and how to do it. Not for kids to become parents to parent the parents. That's the authority system and structure of God. Let me ask you what's happening in your family. Do your kids have the authority? Well, no, they don't really have the authority, but they tell you what they don't want to do and you listen to them, and then you tell me they don't have the authority? I mean, think about your own life. Think, think, about, think about who has the authority in your life. I mean, does no really mean no? If you're a parent in the room today, does no really mean no? Or does no mean, well, just no, but if you decide you don't want to do it, I'm not really going to say anything. Or does no really mean no? I mean, think about authority. We're talking about submitting to God's authority. But you see, God's put an authority structure in place. Does no mean no to you? I mean, if you're a business owner in the room today or you're a leader in a company or organization, if you have anybody that, that you are the leader over, you're their boss, if you want to use that term, you have people that work under your authority. Now let me ask you this question. If you have any of those people in your life today, owner of a company, somebody works for you, and you say to them, I want you to go and do this, whatever this is. And they say to you, no, I don't want to. And just continue working. Do you just let that go and say, okay, you don't have to do it. No, you don't do that. But yet if we're not careful, leading our families will do exactly the same thing. Can I tell you, God 
put authority in your life as a parent for the wisdom of your children. That you can direct your family. No. Does no really mean no? It was about this quiet in the first service too. Let, let, let me ask you a question. In your life, in your house, who has the authority in your home? Is there a culture of honor? Where is it being learned at? It is learned from you and I. You see, God has a structure in our life that he has authority placed in our life. If you go to work tomorrow morning and your boss tells you, hey, I want you to go and drive across town and I want you to clean up a site that we left a mess over there. It's going to take you three hours and when you get done, come back. And you say no to them, guess what? You're probably not going to have a job very long. But yet in our families, we won't take authority at times that we need to. And to set that authority which brings wisdom. There has to be wisdom. L let me just put it to you in, in this context. Okay? So you live on a busy street. Say you live on Highway 72. Okay? You open the front door, tell your kids to go out and play. Do you ever teach them, don't go play in the street? Or do you just open the door and say, go play? I mean, if they get hit by a car, I'll tell them then, don't go in the street. Do we do that? No. We don't do that. We teach them the things that they should and should not do. I mean, think about authority in your life. Think about the authority that, that you are leading your home with and leading your children and your family with. I mean, ask yourself, what am I teaching my kids? It amazes me that there's some, some of us that don't submit to authority, so yet we can't lead our own homes with authority. I mean, do, do we just tell our kids they're in like the third grade, we're like, hey, if you don't go to school, no big deal. It don't matter. Any of y'all do that? No, you don't do that. You know why? Because you know education is important. Do we just say, hey, it's no big deal. You don't have to go back to school after you're in seventh grade. We don't do that. You know why? Because we believe in that. But let me ask you this. Do you give your kids an option whether to learn about God or not? Do you give them an option whether to teach them about God or not? Well, they don't really want to pray when they go to bed. Do they have an option? Well, they don't really want to say the blessing at the table. Do they have an option? Do you say to them in the fourth grade, hey, you don't have to go back to school tomorrow if you don't want? No, you don't do that. But yet, why do we not take authority to teach our family and train our family the things that are so important that matter so much more than education. Now, I'm not saying your kids shouldn't have an education. And there's not a competition here. What I'm trying to get you to is the things that we teach our families, but yet the other things, the principles of God that we let go because we won't take spiritual authority in our home as a godly parent. I mean, did you just say to your kids, no big deal, you don't have to go to school tomorrow? No, we don't do that. But yet we'll say to our kids, they're in the seventh grade, well, they don't feel like going to church. I mean, I, I need to just kind of let them figure it out on their own. No, you don't. You're the authority figure in their life. Well, I mean, you know, they're like 12 years old. I think they should be able to make their own decisions. Really? So you're just going to give them a gun and let them play with it all they want? I mean, let's put it in reality. I mean, let, let's just be honest with ourselves. I mean, sometimes we don't invoke authority on our kids for what is for their benefit. We know the wisdom, but yet they take authority in our lives and we don't even realize it. We give them options whether to learn about God or not. We give them options whether they want to be part of the classes of CLC or not. We give them options about whether they want to go to 05 student ministries or not. And all the while, we're just saying, it don't really matter. Do what you want. But is that the best thing for their life? I mean, when you think about it, would you just say this to your teenager who's like 13 years old? Would you just say, 
hey, you know what? I don't really care if you have sex or not. It's all good. I mean, it's all out there. Just do what you want. We don't do that. We should be teaching them what God's authority is. Here's God's authority. Sex is a gift for married people. That's what the Bible says. And when you have sex outside of marriage, you're going against the authority of God's word and God's plan. And if you are not taking the authority to say that to your children, then you're not leading under God's authority yourself. If you are not taking the initiative in your family to lead your family spiritually, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about leading your family spiritually. If you don't pray with your kids, do you think your kids are just going to pray by themselves when they get problems in their life? No, they're not. Well, I don't really, you know, I've never really like said prayer out loud with my kids. Learn. It's easy. Jesus, this is Eddie. This is my child, Labriska. We want you to know we love you today. We're so thankful for the food we have on our table. We're thankful that you gave us life today. Jesus, thank you for our home and all of our family. Amen. Quit saying you can't pray out loud with your kids. Quit saying it's not important. Oh, well, you never really said it wasn't important. You just don't do it. Authority matters. And the reason sometimes we don't lead with authority is because we're afraid to f submit to authority that God has in our life already. The reason sometimes we don't lead our homes with authority is because we've never submitted to authority ourselves. Submitting to God's authority is essential. You can't lead yourself or your home with the authority of God's principles. You'll live an undisciplined life doing what you want, when you want, with who you want. You'll live without order and without order, your life will be chaos. You'll live undisciplined, and your marriage won't mean anything. Adultery is an easy thing because there's no order in your life, because you're undisciplined, because you're living this life without authority. There is an authority that God put in place for all of us, and I wonder if we really ever see it. Get this, I love this quote by Dr. James Dobson. It says this, By learning to yield to the loving authority, everybody say authority, by learning to yield to the loving authority of a parent, a child learns to submit to other forms of authority which they will confront later in life. I'm going to tell you a story about authority that I personally experienced just a few weeks ago. I'm at Culver's Restaurant, which has the most amazing custard there is in the world, by the way, in Eureka, Missouri. There's a family in front of us, a family of four, a mom and dad, two children, one about three, one about five. We're in line behind them, it's Karen and I, and there continues to more people come in and get behind us. The mom and dad order, place their order, and the mom leans down to the three-year-old and says, what would you like to eat? They have this, 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 and this. And as she named that, the child started screaming, I don't want that! I don't want that! I don't like that. After about a minute of her trying to convince this child to place an order, I was a little overwhelmed to the point like, if you was my kid, I would whoop, mm, don't make me say it. <laughs> so here's what I've done. After literally about a minute, I just looked at my watch. And I said, I want to see how long this takes. Now remember, one family in front of us, three-year-old and five-year-old, have not been told what to order. They've been given the option to do what they want. Okay? I'm behind them. A line is forming behind us. Two minutes later passes by. Two more I'm t literally on my watch. I look. One minute's passed. I looked at watch. Two more minutes pass by. The kid is still yelling. The mom's like, honey, don't yell authority issues after that two minutes passes 
Culver's calls for another cashier to come. Of course, we're next in line, so we get to go. We order our food. If you've been to Culver's, you get a number. You go sit at your table. They bring it to you. We go sit down at our table. The family is still there ordering, trying to order. Two more minutes pass by. Two plus two plus one. Five minutes now, this child, five literal. I'm not talking about, I'm saying five. I'm talking about, I looked at my watch five minutes. This child has been yelling to their parent. I don't want. I don't like. And a host of other people are just coming in. And you can see the management of Culver's like wondering what is going on. Authority issues. You see, I wonder sometimes if we don't realize that the things that we're teaching and training our family really do matter. If you don't teach and train your children what it means to submit to authority when they get that first job at 15 or 16 years old and somebody tells them to do something and they say, I don't have to, you know what, they're not going to have a job very long. As a matter of fact, you're doing them a disservice because you're not teaching them that God has a structure of authority. Remember the scripture I read, 1 Peter? It says, you want to make the master proud? It says, respect all authorities in your life. What are we teaching and training? You know, some people that take authority to, to the wrong level, to the, to the next level that maybe it shouldn't be taken to. But then there's sometimes we just... We just give in to our kids. I've, I've had parents say, well, you know, I just, I mean, my, my kid's on like an iPad and a, and a gaming system like eight or nine hours a day, nothing I can do about it. Really? What do you mean there's nothing you can do about it? Who bought it? You're the authority figure in their life. Well, you know, they just talk back to me and I just can't stop it. And they're seven and they talk back to you and you can't stop it? You see, it's not just a parenting issue. It's an authority issue. God did not set the structure up for your kids to take authority over you and tell you what to do. God gave you wisdom as an adult parent. That's the reason he structured it like he did. That you have wisdom because now you're an adult and you have a child. Not a child having a child. Remember, we talked about that earlier. But the adult has the wisdom to instruct the child in what's most important. But yet we'll tell our kids they have to go to school, but they don't have to go to church and learn about God. We'll protect their education, but we'll let their eternity go to hell. Man, Pastor Eddie, isn't that stretching it a little bit? No, it's not. We'll let them choose whether they want to go to church or not, whether they want to hear about God or not, whether they want to pray around the table or not. You see, there's authority that has to take place in our lives. And when we do that, we have to manage it well. I know there's some people don't manage authority real well. I'll tell you a story of a guy that didn't manage his authority very well. There's a ranch, South Texas. The rancher owns this entire property, South Texas. A DE agent shows up with their team to this ranch. And they say to this owner, Sir, we, we need to search the property. We're the DEA. We need to search your property. South Texas, you, get, you understand what they're searching, what they're doing, okay? And the owner of the ranch says, okay, but just don't go over that fence into that area over there to the DEA agent. The DEA agent, you can tell, he kind of like gets a little frustrated. And he said, sir, evidently you don't understand. We are the DEA, and we're here to search this property. And the owner says, well, sir, I, I just want to tell you, you shouldn't cross that fence and, and go over there on that side. By this time, the DEA agent is frustrated. He pulls out his badge and said, sir, we are the DEA, and we'll search whatever we want to search anytime we want to search it. The owner says, okay, do what you want. The owner goes back to doing what he was doing, working on the farm. The DEA agent, DEA agent and the team goes and they search. And all of a sudden, the owner of the farm, the ranch, hears this man screaming. There's a man screaming and he's running. And he's running back toward the fence, toward 
where the owner is. And the owner sees him. And he runs over to the fence. And behind the DEA agent is a 2,500-pound bull that is chasing him, just about to take him down. He's running as fast as he can, but the bull is gaining ground all the time. The rancher runs over to the fence and he says, Show him your badge! <laughs> Show him your badge! He'll listen. You see, there are some people that take authority too, too strongly and too far. But God has given us authority to lead our homes and lead our families. But the reason sometimes I think we don't do that is because we have failed to submit to God's authority in our own life. So therefore we feel like we struggle leading our home with spiritual authority, relational authority. The second thing we're going to learn today, first of all, is to submit to God's authority. And I'm going to wrap up and close quickly with a second thought. The second thing we need to learn, it's in your notes today, is this. We must learn to take authority over the enemy. To take authority. Did you know God don't only require us to submit to his authority, but he requires us to take authority over the enemy. Can I tell you something today? That the enemy is out to destroy your home. He is out to mess your marriage up. The enemy is out there right now. The Bible says this. He is as a roaring lion. Get this. The devil is not a lion. He is as a roaring lion. Going about seeking who he can evoke his authority on. Seeking people that he can destroy. The enemies that are out there in your life. They, the enemy, he... he seeks to destroy your home, your marriage, your family. The enemy is out there to evoke addiction and struggles to make you feel worthless. The enemy is out there today and he is trying his best to make you think there is no hope for you. But I want to tell you today, the second thing I want you to learn is to take authority over the enemy. Because the Bible says that we have authority over Satan. And the Word of God says it this way, and I want you to get it because you need to understand it. Luke chapter 10, Jesus is speaking, and this is what he says. Look, I, speaking of himself, Jesus, I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them, and nothing will injure you. What Jesus is saying to you is take authority over Satan. There are some of you that listen to every lie he says. There's some of you that you listen to everything he puts into your life. He tells you you're not worthy. The enemy will come and say your marriage is not going to make it. The enemy will come to you and say your children hate you. I want to tell you today, take authority over the enemy. Because God has given you that authority. And when you realize he has given you authority to take control of the enemy in your life, you can speak against every negative thought. You can speak against every negative thing that comes into your life and say, Satan, you have no dominion in my life. Take authority. Take authority over the enemy in your life today. If you feel hopeless, take authority. First of all, we have to learn to submit to the authority of God. Second of all, we've got to learn to take authority over the enemy. If you're here in this room today, as I close... And you've just been struggling with some stuff. I want to tell you, God loves you. If you've been struggling with some authority issues, I want to tell you, if you'll submit your life in authority to God, if you'll submit yourself to God in authority, God will help you to lead your home, your personal life, your spiritual life in Him. Some of you in the room today, the enemy has bombarded your mind, he's bombarded your spirit. Take authority in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you. And as I do today, I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads right where you're sitting. Wherever you are today, and the authority issues that you're dealing with, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for every person in this room. God, I thank you for the power of your grace and your mercy 
God, that has been given to us and afforded to us. Father, I thank you for the power of your love that's in our life today. Lord, there are some of us in the room who have who've really dealt with submitting ourselves to your authority. Maybe it's authority in the order that my life should be. Maybe it's spiritual authority that I, I've given in to sin and struggled in my life, allowed sin to overtake me. Maybe there are some in the room, Lord, that have struggled leading their family spiritually and taking authority to lead with wisdom their home spiritually to teach them to love and serve God with all of their heart. Lord, I pray today that you'll help us in every area of our life to submit to you, Lord. God, to submit to you our lives in total honesty, God. To say, Lord, you have dominion over every part of me. Father, there are people in the room today, there are people on live stream today, maybe that are struggling with, with the enemy putting things in their mind. I speak against every thought of hopelessness those that feel like they have no worth I speak against it in the name of Jesus people in this room are on live stream today that their marriage is a wreck and the enemy's told them they're not gonna make it I speak against that in the name of Jesus and father we proclaim today that we will take authority over the enemy in the name of Jesus today we proclaim that Father, I ask today that you'll help us to surrender ourselves to you. Today, as your head is bowed, no one's looking around. If you're in this room today and you're like, Eddie, I, I have just struggled with some sin issues in my life. Some sin issues. I haven't given completely over to God and I, I'm struggling with some hurt, some sin. Today, I need to confess that to God. If that's you, you have an authority issue with sin, I want to pray for you. And as your head is bowed, if that's you right now, I'm just going to ask you to just lift your hand and say, yes, I'm struggling with some sin issues. That's you. Just lift your hand right now. I'm going to pray for you right where you're sitting. God sees your hand. Father, thank you for those that are so honest today to just say, yes, Lord. I'm struggling with submitting with some sin in my life. Lord, I pray today as we pray for forgiveness, we ask that you'll forgive us. We ask that you'll cleanse us. Lord, those that are on live stream today who maybe would say this prayer, Lord, I'm sorry for the sin in my life. And today, I'm asking you, God, to forgive me. I submit to your authority. God, and I ask that you'll cleanse me and accept me as your child. Help me to clean this area of my life up. Father, we thank you today. We proclaim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today is